Uh, we're in number five of a series here that we've been called that we've called uh, freedom, and it's very important that we we understand freedom and what freedom is because Jesus came to set us free. And it's amazing that a lot of times, although we use the terminology freedom, we really don't actually understand what that freedom literally or really is. I talked uh, at the beginning of this series when we asked you know, you to define freedom. A lot of people think that's a lack of responsibility or out from under laws, uh, accountable to nobody, independence, uh, no obligation. Uh, and that's sort of the, the, the general consensus of what freedom is. But in actual fact, biblical freedom is totally the opposite to that. Um, in order to find out what freedom was, we had to, had to go back to the Word of God and find out uh, what it looked like. What, what, what does freedom look like? And we discovered that when God made Adam and put Adam in the Garden of Eden, that Adam was created and placed in freedom. Freedom wasn't a lack of accountability or a lack of responsibility. Freedom wasn't independence. In fact, it was the opposite. Freedom was a, the ability to manage the resources that God had given to Adam. And Adam worked at the garden. Adam cultivated the culture, the, the environment around him. Adam had a free will. Adam had choice, but he used that free will and he used that choice to manage what God had given to him. So he was accountable and responsible. And freedom is management. It's the ability to use your will. It's the ability to use your choices and manage the environment and the world around you. We talked about how that Adam mismanaged his uh, stewardship. And in mismanaging his stewardship, he yielded himself to sin. Sin took the advantage and, and uh, influenced Adam. Adam, when he came under sin, uh, the, the very first thing that happened that we notice in the Word of God is that when God came to Adam and said, Adam, where are you at? The first thing Adam did when he mismanaged was he blamed. He blamed Eve. And blame is a sure indicator, a sure revelation of the very fact that we're not free anymore. Uh, because we start to blame everybody for why we're not getting where we need to be or doing what we should be doing. Uh, we become aware that we've become inadequate or insufficient in the responsibility given to us. But it's not my fault. It's always someone else's fault. And so blame is a, is a sure giveaway that we, we're not walking free. When you're free, you use your choice and you use your will to manage and, and, and govern, and cultivate the environment that is around you. But when you're not free, you make excuses for every reason why you never achieve or accomplish um, what's, what you've been asked to do. So Adam, uh, af after sin entered in, Adam became a, a, a slave to sin. He was under the subjugation and the bondage and the dominance of sin. And he, he could never be free. And the scriptures tell us that whoever you bow your knee to becomes your master. And, and for Adam, sin became his master. And you could tell that he was a, no longer a, a, a good manager. He, or not, not that he wasn't managing, but he wasn't free. And you could tell he wasn't free because uh, from Adam and on through, man always blamed everybody else for why they never achieved or accomplished the goals or the mandate or the destiny purpose of their life. It was always someone else's fault. It was what my man did or my dad did. It was what, um, where I was born or what I had or what I didn't have or the uh, addiction and so on and so forth. Always looking for excuses to uh, give credence as to why I'm not where I should be or doing what I need to do or why I'm not satisfied because I realize I haven't arrived where I'm supposed to be. So as a result of that, um, Adam ended up in a uh, in bondage, bondage to sin. And Jesus came to set us free from that. Jesus came to deliver us, the church, from that. So um, let me let me recap a little bit, press into, into this. Um, we, we, um, we took up this illustration here of the children of Israel as an example uh, of what, what actually was going on. And the children of Israel, like humanity, but in, in type, the, the children of Israel were under the bondage and the uh, oppression and the subjugation and the domination of, of Egypt. 
and God came in and supernaturally delivered them. And the reason for supernaturally delivering them was because he wanted to take them to the land of Canaan or take them to freedom where they could manage their own destiny, manage their own purpose, manage their own environment, manage their own life and fulfill all the uh, intent that God had for them as a nation. So God supernaturally delivered them and he brought them out of Egypt, out from under subjugation, out from under bondage, out from under slavery. And when they got out, they were so happy. I mean, they sang songs, they played music, they danced and rejoiced out of the fact that they had now been delivered and liberated. Problem was, that whole generation never did go to freedom. They never went to freedom because they never got free. And we started to talk about how that you can be delivered, you can be liberated out from under sin, just like these people were, were delivered out from under slavery, but they never got free. They never got into freedom. And, and, and these people never did. They, they had this Egyptian mindset, this slavery thinking. And uh, you know, it was easier when you get into it, when you come out from under slavery, they, 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 they never grasped uh, where God wanted to bring them to. And, and because they didn't change their thinking, they had this slave mentality. And so like a slave, they were always looking to be told what to do, when to do it, where, where to do it. They were always looking to someone else to meet their need and, and they didn't know how to manage themselves. That was the problem. They, they weren't managers, they were being managed. And so and likewise, the church, under sin, the church is managed. But when Jesus set us uh, and liberated us and delivered us from under sin, the whole purpose of that was to empower us to manage and be in control of our destiny and our future and our purpose again. We had to learn to be managers. But being a manager means you be responsible. Being a manager means you're accountable. We had to learn that. Now, the children of Israel didn't learn that. So they spent their whole time delivered, liberated, but they never left the wilderness. Oh, they sang, oh, they danced, but they never experienced freedom. Now, we said likewise, the church. The church, if you look at the church, similarly so, we're delivered from sin. We're delivered from, out from under the bondage and the control of, of, of sin. That's what Jesus came to do. And in liberating us, the whole purpose of our liberation was to bring us into freedom, to bring us to the place where we could manage our own life again and not be managed, not be governed, not be dictated to by sin and the control of it. The problem is, it's a whole change of mindset. I've got to learn to be responsible. I've got to learn to be accountable. And, and, I, and I wasn't brought up that way. In the world I live in, under sin, where everybody else is under the governance or under the management of sin, we have a tendency to, to blame, not to be accountable, not to be responsible, to want to be independent. And as a result, we never learn to manage. We're always, we're always excusing ourselves for our mismanagement because of other people and other influences. And so the church likewise, delivered from sin, you know, liberated from under sin, never move into freedom because like the children of Israel, we spend our time wanting to be told what to do, when to do it, how to do it, where to do it. And we spend most of our life, instead of managing our lives, we, we're looking for God to take care of us. We're looking for God to, you know, like we were in slavery, when to get up, when to get down, make sure there's food on my table, look after me. And, and we're not being responsible, we're not managing, we're, we're still looking for God to take care of us in, in this situation. Freedom is not a change of location. It's a change of mindset. It's this ability to manage and be accountable and responsible for, for the ability to manage and culture my life and be in charge of my environment. And, and so it's not a change of location. The children of Israel had a change of location, but, but they weren't changed. And you and I can be out from under sin and be part of the church, but still not free, still not experiencing free, still being managed instead of managing. And so deliverance provides the opportunity for freedom, it does, but not the fulfillment of freedom. And so yes, I rejoice, I'm glad, I'm happy, I'm delighted that I'm, I'm not under sin, I'm delighted that I'm, I'm, I don't have to succumb to that anymore. Jesus has delivered and set me free in the new birth experience. But I have to move on now. I've got to take 
the opportunity afforded me now that I'm not a slave to sin and I've got to step out and I've got to step into governance and management of my own life now. And for many in the church, they don't do that. So we spend our time parked in this wilderness experience, always believing and trusting and hoping that God will come in and, and deliver us uh, and God will take care of us and God will provide for us and God will fight for us. And that's exactly what the children of Israel did in the wilderness. They, they never did move on. They were always relying on, depending on, looking for God to do the next thing for them or fight their next battle for them. God wants us to move on from that. God wants us to, to move into life and manage. So, we talked about how sin gained control through three different things. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. That's what happened to Adam and Eve. The devil convinced them that they weren't there yet, and so he showed them uh, through their eyes and through their emotions um, these three things. Uh, even in 1 John, uh, John tells us that uh, you know, what governs the world are these three things, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. We saw when Jesus went into the wilderness to be tempted himself of the devil before he entered into his ministry. These three arenas were the arenas in which Jesus had to show his control, his ability to manage these three areas of his life. The lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Why these three? Because these three, appetite, our, our, uh, our greed, and our motive, these three things uh, are what brought humanity under servitude. They, they uh, 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 controlled humanity so that he couldn't, couldn't be free. So you, had to, you have to control these three. And so we took these up. If you're not managing, you're being managed. And so, and we talked last week about appetite, food, drink, and pleasure. And we've got to get control of that. And now that I'm free from under sin, I have the ability to manage myself. And so I manage this arena like Jesus did when he was tempted. You've got to manage this and bring this into control. We talked here about in 2 Timothy in chapter 2, it said, Thou therefore endure hardness as a soldier of Jesus Christ. It says, No man war, that warring entangles himself in the affairs of life, that he may please him who chose him to be a soldier. And if any man strive for the mastery or as an athlete, yet he is not crowned except he does it lawfully. And the husbandman that laboreth must be first partaker of the fruit. Consider what I say, and the Lord give you understanding in these things. Paul, as he wrote to Timothy, talked about how that these, these believers, uh, they've got to move into this control or this ability to manage their life. Because if you don't manage it, and, you're, and, and even though you're free or liberated, even though you're delivered, if you don't have this uh, understanding of freedom and you don't manage these arenas, start managing your life, then you'll spend most of your Christian life, like they did in the wilderness, waiting for God to do something next, waiting for God to take you uh, and provide for you and, and so on and so forth, instead of moving into management and and making a difference and, and instead of you waiting for God to work upon you, you actually start moving and God works with you. And it's part of the solution instead of always being the issue or the problem. And so he says here, here's three things I want you to do in order to bring your appetite, to bring your body, to bring your life into management. He says you've got to be like a soldier. You've got to be obedient and have courage and loyalty. You've got to focus on what's at hand. You've got to focus on uh, your purpose in life. And as a soldier, that's what you've got to focus on now. As a believer, that's what you've got to focus on now. What God has planned and the purpose God has for my life. That's what's the priority. That's what's important in my life. And I've got to have a discipline in my life as a soldier does in his, to be able to engage the reason for him being a soldier, the reason why I've been liberated from sin. Uh, you've got to be like an athlete. You've got to have some dis discipline and, and make some sacrifice and have some diligence. And again, this, 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 this is the arena of taking management of our appetite. And, and like a farmer, you've got to work hard. You've got to plow. You've got to, as Jesus described about the, the this parable of the sower and the ground and the seed, you've got to work hard. You've got to, uh, uh, you've got to uh, sow to the future. You've got to realize that I'm working now for something later. And you've got to have the hope and the faith and the, 
about this. Not that wrong wording. I didn't change it. Uh, and the patience for uh, for making that happen. Uh, again, this is management. This is how you start to know you're managing instead of being managed. As I said, I'm free from sin. I'm free and delivered. Sorry, I'm 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 not. I am free from it. I'm delivered from sin. I'm liberated from sin. But in order to walk into the freedom, and I got to start managing my life. And this is the first arena. You got to manage your appetite. I told us how we present our bodies. You got to take control of what is you and start managing it and be responsible and accountable to God for managing myself. Or uh, we talk of this, uh, this other one, priority. What becomes the priority of my life? Um, this was the, uh, the the lust of the eyes, always wanting more, always living for other things and, and, and for whatever. Um, it says here in uh, Mark chapter 4, uh, and these are the things, these are the, are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word, and the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things entering in and, and choke the word. This This passion, this desire, this, a, a pursuit of things again was one of the reasons that sin entered into humanity and, and put him uh, under management uh, now that we are delivered from and liberated from sin we've got to start managing this this is not the, the, the goal this is not what we're after in life we've got to start managing our life when it comes to things because if you don't, then it'll just choke the word out of your life. And, and, and it's amazing how many in the body of Christ uh, actually use our uh, liberation, use our deliverance to try and get God to and manipulate scriptures to get things. That's exactly what we did when we were governed by sin. Uh, we, we lived for things. And it's amazing. The church sort of changed location, but we haven't managed ourselves. So all we really want the Word of God to do is rubbing the lamp and, and trying to use the Word in the name of Jesus to get things. We, we, it's no different. We've changed location, but we haven't changed our mindset. And so in Matthew chapter 19, it says, Then Jesus said unto the disciples, Very I say unto you, that a rich man can hardly enter into the kingdom of God. And again I say unto you, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. And I use this illustration, or Jesus was using it actually, but I was explaining it last week, how that he didn't say a rich man can't go in. He didn't say a rich man don't get they don't get saved, don't get born again. But he was trying to use the illustration that, you know, it's very, very hard when you have your eye on substance and you have your eye on things and you're gravitating that the, the, the whole purpose of your life and the whole um, a, a drive in life is to acquire things. I mean, Jesus would later on say, you know, a man's life does not consist of the things that he that he acquires. That's really, and yet under sin, you know, that's all that we thought about, you know, uh, under under bondage where we were being managed. We sort of we just always had this passion for, you know, more things, better things, new things. And it, it's, it's, it's a being managed mindset. We got to get out of that and start managing this arena of our life. That is not the purpose of my life, is not for things. The purpose of my life is not to acquire. Because here's the deal, you come into the world with nothing and you're going out of the world with nothing. Everything in between is just a, a management thing. And the church, uh, instead of getting on with the purpose of, of why we've been liberated and why we've been delivered, we spend this time in the church or in the wilderness, so to speak, um, rubbing the lamp, using the name of Jesus, manipulating the scripture for the sole purpose of getting more things, looking for things. And as a result, we, we, we miss what it was all about. And so uh, the priority of our life, the priority of our Christian life is not things. And as long as we're running after things, we're being managed by that mindset. We need to be managing that mindset. So I took up this whole illustration here about um, how difficult it was uh, for to get into a uh, to get into the things of God, in order to do so, he used this wicked gate scenario where you've got to offload stuff. You've got to be able to manage stuff. And you've got to let go or take off what you don't need to go through and enter into the city, enter into 
and the freedom of God. And there's some stuff you just got to offload. There's some stuff you just got to get rid of and, and, and not look for or, or need. You got to manage it. And so he said, that's the priority. The priority is your ability to manage a, the resources that you have and not live for the resources that you have. And, and that, this is what people do constantly. In Romans 8, 31, it says, what shall we say to these things? And again, it's this lust for things. It's, it's difficult to enter into freedom when all you want and all you're being driven by is this desire to acquire more things. You can't, you can't do that. And what shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? And then here's the reality. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him freely give us all things? Things are not the priority in the pursuit of our life. Things are in addition. God will give us things. But, but the things and the pursuit of it aren't, aren't what manage us. We manage them. We, we, we're, we're not, the priority of our life is not uh, acquiring stuff. Our, the priori priority of our life is to enter into freedom. And it's amazing, things get added to us. Things get, we gotta have control of not just our appetite, but this passion for or desire for things. We've got to be able to manage, not just ourselves, our, our appetite, but we've gotta also be able to, able to manage our priority in life. And if you can, then you'll never enter into freedom. You'll still be under this drive to acquire things. And he said, look, God already gave us Jesus. I mean, that's the greatest thing you can ever have. And, and, and if he's already given you Jesus, then you know, he's, it's easy for God to give you other stuff. It's, it's not what we pursue. It's not what we use our Christian life for. And it's amazing how many people in churches today, when they go there, that's all they learn about. Taking the word of God to enable them to have bigger and better and more. That is not the drive of the Christian life. That's not freedom. That's that wilderness experience where they are being managed by these passions. They're not managing these things. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 24, Jesus talking about this priority in life draws this analogy here. He says, no man can serve two masters. Either he'll hate the one and he'll love the other or else he'll hold to the one and he'll despise the other. But you can't serve both of them. You, you, you've been liberated, you've been delivered, but the whole purpose of, of, of being delivered from sin and, and being liberated from under sin was not to spend the rest of our life rubbing the lamp, so to speak, like waiting for the genie to come out of the bottle, using the name of Jesus and manipulating certain promises of God for the whole or sole purpose of acquiring stuff. And yet when you look at the body of Christ, it, it amazes me, it grieves me that we spend a lot of our time uh, in endeavoring to use God's word to take us to that place where we get more stuff and more things and, and we acquire things by the word of God. We say we're, we're in it because we love God and, and we're happy, we're out from under sin, but really what we're doing is our mentality, we're still under this slave mentality. We're still using this lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh and the pride of life. It's still what's driving us. And, and that's a managing, we're being managed, sorry. That's a being managed mindset. That's not a managing mindset. A managing mindset is I'm in control of my physiology. I'm in control of my appetite. I'm in control of what I eat, what I drink, and the pleasures of life. They don't govern me. They don't rule me. I manage them. I'm, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm not driven by, a, and the priority of my life is not the acquisition of things. I'm in control of that. That is not why I live. That's not the purpose of my life. That's not the reason I've been freed from sin so that I can rub the lamp and, and, and manipulate scripture to get things. That is not what the Christian life is about at all. The Christian life is about managing life, managing the resources of life, not being managed by them, but managing them and using my life to fulfill the purpose and the destiny that God has for me. I'm in control. I'm managing myself. And again, he said, if, you, if you're going to live like this, you can't serve God and, and, 
and still have this passion for things. You have to manage this aspect of your life. And it's hard for people to do it because, you know, as he said, this camel going through the, the little wicket gate. You, you've got to you got to be able to offload stuff. I mean, stuff is just what it is. It's just, uh, it's just resources. But we don't live for it. It serves us, but we don't serve it. And it's amazing how many in the church today are serving this. They, this is all that they, they think that, that Jesus set them free for. And, and so they made, their doctrines major on the acquisition of things. That's not management, that's being managed. That's not having things, that's being had by things. So Jesus is about to teach on this and he goes, you can't serve both. You can't be managed and, and think you're a manager. You, you've got to manage these things. And then he goes into this illustration. He says, therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life. Here it goes. What are we going to eat? What are we going to drink? What are we going to put on? This is this appetite. This is this priority of life. And, and so many, that's what, that's what they're living for. And in, as believers, that's really what we rub the lamp for and use the scriptures for, to, to get God to, what am I going to eat? What am I going to drink? What am I going to put on? Same with the people in the wilderness. That's exactly what they've done. When they came out of Egypt, they spent the next 40 years, what are we going to eat? What are we going to drink? And how are you going to take care of us? And, and the church come out from under sin and they spend the rest of their habitation in the earth rubbing the lamp asking for these three things. God, you know, what are we going to eat? What are we going to drink? And, and what am I going to put on? Where am I going to live? What am I going to drive? He says, don't take any thought. Stop worrying about these issues of life. What are we going to eat? What are we going to drink? and nor yet for your body what are you going to put on? Is not life more than meat and the body more than raiment? He says, come on guys, life is more, life is not about, that's not what life is all about. Life is not all about the pleasure. Life is not all about what I'm eating or drinking. Life is not all about what I drive, where I live and how much I have. Your life is bigger than that. Your life is more than that. And again, you've got to be able to manage this priority because if that's what you're living for, you're not living free. You're being managed because that's what governs you. That's what drives you. That's what motivates you. You've got to be in control of this stuff. To be free, you've got to manage resources. You've got to manage circumstance. You've got to manage your life. So he says here, Behold the fowl of the air. He gives this illustration. For they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Let me tell you what they don't do. He says, the fowl of the air, the birds. Here's what they don't do. They don't so they don't reap and they don't hoard up and gather into barns. They don't do that. It says, yet your father, heavenly father, he feeds them. He looks after them. He takes care of them. They have all of their needs met. They're not living for their needs. I mean, what they do is they tweet and they, and they provide um, uh, for us, the joy of, of the wonderment of their creation and they give us so much pleasure and they give us so much satisfaction in their, in their very, in, 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 in the variation of them and, and, and the skill of them and all of the things that birds do. He said, but I'll tell you what they don't do. What they don't do is they don't sow and they don't reap and they don't gather into barns and you know what? They don't do what they're not supposed to do. They do do what they are supposed to do. And when you do what you are supposed to do, God takes care of that, that other stuff. It's important. They don't do what they're not required to do. They don't do that. They do what they're supposed to do and God takes care of everything else. He says, for which of you by taking thought can add or increase the measure of your life. Then he gives another illustration. And why take thought for clothes? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They don't toil, and neither do they spin. Yet I, I say unto you that Solomon, in all his glory, was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, and, and, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, Shall he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? 
Therefore take no thought, saying, What will we eat, or what will we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? He's saying, you know what? Look around you. God makes and creates certain things to for certain reasons. And when they do what they're supposed to do, God takes care of the rest. Because they do what they're supposed to do, and they're not doing what they're not supposed to do, God takes care of the, 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 the gap. And he's saying, you know what? God has a purpose for humanity and a purpose for our life. And the whole purpose of our life and the whole purpose of sucking oxygen is not to spend our life worrying and wondering, what am I going to eat, what am I going to wear, and how can I acquire stuff? There's more to our life than that. There's a bigger priority to our life than living for things, living for appetite. The priority of our life is should be different. That, that's not why God gave us life. And like the lilies of the field and like the fowl of the air, if we would get after life and do what we're supposed to do and not do what we're not supposed to do, I think that's right, God will take care of it. God will take care of it. The, the lilies and, and, and the fowl of the air, they do what they're supposed to do. God fills up the gap. They, they're always looked after. You and I, we're not to live our life running about worrying about what am I going to eat where and how am I going to uh, uh, obtain and acquire. That's not what our life is about. If we would get on and do what we're supposed to do, God will take care of that stuff. But our life is not to be doing that stuff. No more than the fowl of the air or the, or the lilies of the field worry about other stuff or prioritize other things. They don't do that. They just get on what they're supposed to do and God takes care of the rest. So he goes on. For after these things, what things? What am I going to eat? What am I going to wear? And how do I acquire stuff? Again, that was under bondage. That was under sin. That was being managed. I wasn't managing. I was being managed. And so in slavery, it says, but after these things do the Gentiles seek. But your heavenly Father knows that you need all of these things. But here's the priority. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these other things will be added to you. Again, like the fowl of the air, do what you're supposed to do and don't do what you're not supposed to do. God will take care of it. Like the lilies of the field, do what you're supposed to do. Don't do what you're not supposed to do and God will take care of all that. And we're not like the Gentiles who spend their life worrying about what am I going to eat, what am I going to wear and how am I going to acquire because they're being managed by sin. They're, they're slaves to it. And that's where they are at. He said, we don't live like that. That's not what we're supposed to do. We're free. We've been liberated and delivered and we don't spend our lives doing what the others under sin do. We've got a bigger priority in life. Our priority is to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things. What things? What am I going to eat? What am I going to wear? And what am I going to have in order to sustain my life while I'm here? Where the roof over my house, or the roof over my head, and, and what I drive, and how I'm going to get my bills paid. God says, I'll take care of all of that. If you'll put your priority where it's supposed to be. If you'll do what you're supposed to do, and not do, not this worrying, and not do what you're not supposed to do, I'll take care of it. And yet when you look at the church today, we spend most of our Christian life thinking, worrying about what are we going to eat, what are we going to wear, and how can we use God to help us acquire a better standard or quality of life. He said, nah, that, that's, what, that's, what, that's what those that are being managed do. Managers operate completely different. Next thing we've got to understand is, is motive. Um, the pride uh, of uh, our pride or attention or selfishness because a lot of times it's all about us in in the wilderness the children of israel it was all about them what am i going to eat what about me i mean am i going to starve am i am i am i am i, am I going to thirst um, and and take care of me look after me and uh, move on my behalf do miracles for me tell me where to go tell me how to go tell me when to go um, and it's all about God. It's like God spend, uh, spends his whole day. When I wake up, God's, uh, my intent for God is that God should spend um, his whole day taking care of me. 
that his job is to look after me. His job is to be, you know, uh, running errands for me to make me have a better, more prosperous, more fulfilled um, life. And, and when you think of Christendom and, and churches today, many times that's really all they major on. Uh, you, you're the center of, of attention. It's all about me. It's all about God looking, taking care of me. It's all about God understanding why, you know, I'm having it so hard. I'm having it so difficult. And, you know, it was what happened to me. And it was the addiction that I had. And that's the reason I'm not getting on any further. But God, you know, you take care of me. And, you know, you, you'll climb the mountain just to, just to deliver me. And, and it's all about me, 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 what God's doing for me. Now, that's that, that's that, bondage mentality again that's that um a uh, uh, slavery mentality that's being managed god wants me to manage my life now not spending my whole life where i'm the center where or i'm looking for the attention where i'm looking to god to spend all of his time looking after me god wants me to get up and not waste my day looking for god to take care of me but for me to be a part of the solution, to be a manager of me, a manager of resources, a management, a manager of the skills, a manager of the of the environment around me, and to go into the world and become the 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 solution to other people's problems, instead of spending my whole Christian life looking to God to cater to my problems. And that's what we do. And, and we're stuck. We're stuck. We're a wilderness church. We're not a free church. First Peter 5. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Ye all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. It's not all about me. When I get up in the morning and open my eyes, I, I don't kneel and say, God, do this for me, do that for me. God, do this for me. Take care of me. Deliver me. I, 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 give me this. Give me that. Do this. Do that. It's not all about me. For God resists the proud and he gives grace to the humble. Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God and he will exalt you. I mean, God will take care of these things. My job is not to spend my Christian life with this being managed mentality. Looking to be told what to do, when to do it, where to do it, how to do it. Having no control over my appetite. Having no control over uh, and worrying about what am I going to eat, what am I going to drink and, and, and how am I going to get stuff and he says, stop, stop. That's not freedom. Freedom is, is when you realize that you are now no longer the slave of. You don't have to blame anybody. You can actually be what God wants you to be and do what God wants you to do and have what God wants you to have. But here's the deal. You must be in control of these arenas. You must be in control of yourself. You must be in control of, of your appetite. You must be in control of your priority. Your priority is serving God. Your priority is doing the will of God, fulfilling the purpose of the gift and the grace that is you. That's what I'm that's what my life is about now. And that my whole motive is not about me. It's about you, God. It's about what you want me to do. I've been bought with a price. I'm not my own. I'm dead. And the life I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loves me and gave himself for me. It's not all about what God can do for me. It's about God, what can I do for you today? This is management. This is, this is where freedom takes us. Freedom takes us to start bringing control like a soldier and an athlete and a farmer. Control of me. Discipline of me. Purpose for me. Priority for me is not what I can get. It's what I can give. It's not what God can do. It's what I can do. It's not what I can acquire. It's what I can give. And then it's not all about me. It's about him. It's not all about me. It's about how I can bring him and do what he wants and become part of the solution in this world that is under slavery, this world that is in bondage. And I don't spend my Christian life with this sin consciousness, this sin mentality where all I think about is me. All I think about is my appetite. All I think about is my acquisition. And all I think that God exists for is to look after me. And that's where the church is at. It needs to break out. It needs to move on. It needs to go to freedom. It needs to understand that there's an accountability and a responsibility to God. And I've got to grasp it. I've got to take it. And I've got to start managing 
me and then with that ability to manage me and 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 my appetite and and my priority and my motive when i manage me then i can manage life around me and when the circumstances come and the situations arise i'm not in control of them i mean they come to all of us but i am in control because i'm learning to manage i am now in control as to what effects circumstance and situation have on me why because I'm managing. I'm not being managed by life. I'm not being managed by appetite. I'm not being managed by, by selfishness. I'm not being managed by me. I'm being managed, I, I, I'm, I'm being the manager of me. I'm being the manager of resources. I'm in control again. And this is what freedom is. So, humble myself. He says this in Proverbs, a man's pride shall bring him low, but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. You know, pride and, and thinking it's all about me, it puts me in the wrong place. It, it locates me in the wrong place. But when I humble myself, when, when I, I, I don't think it's all about me, and, and I position myself correctly, particularly when it comes to positioning myself with God, when I position myself correctly, God starts to exalt me. Because it's not all about me, it's about Him. In Philippians 2, 5, it said, Let this mind be in you that was also in Christ, who, although he was God, he didn't think it robbery. That's, that's not what he was driving him. He wasn't out here to prove I'm God. He, it wasn't all about him. He taught it not robbery to be equal to God, but watch, he made himself of no reputation. It wasn't about him and what he could get and what he could acquire and who'd think he was this or who'd think he was that. That was not why he came. He made himself of no reputation. He took upon himself the form of his servant, and was made in, like, in the likeness of men, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself. He repositioned himself. He prioritized the purpose of his being here, and the purpose of his life, and the purpose of, of the gift and the grace that was him. He humbled himself, became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross, wherefore God also had highly exalted him, and given him a name above every name. Boy, it's so important that we understand that freedom is managing our life. Freedom is taking control of appetite, taking control of priority, and taking control of purpose. I manage it now. When I came out from under bondage, when I came out from under sin, when I was delivered from these things, it was to take me back to the place where Adam had originally been, where I manage my life and I manage my environment. I'm in control. I'm not being managed by circumstance. I'm not being managed by situation. And under sin, the pride of life, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, that's what brought, that's what brought man into slavery. I'm free from that slavery now, but freedom from it is, is managing myself. But as you can see, as I said, the church many times, we, we come out from under slavery, we come out from under sin, and yet we never go free. We spend most of our Christian life never controlling our appetites, never focusing our priority, and never humbling ourselves and realizing it's not about us, the whole purpose of being liberated was now so I can serve God, what I can do for and with God. Matthew eleven twenty eight, Jesus said, Come on to me, all ye that uh, labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. And here's his example. For I am meek and I am lowly in heart, and you shall find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Not I, I, I don't have all of these burdens that people, worries that people have in life. What am I going to eat? What am I going to wear? How can I acquire? How can I have? Here God's all about me. Deliver me. You know, leave the 99 and follow me. God deliver me. I mean, I know I'm going to miss it. I know. And then I sing songs about, you know, all the effort God's going to go to bring me back. That's not management. That's being managed. And we've got to change that whole mindset because that's not freedom. We, we got to press into this next level. So, back to this illustration of, of the children of Israel 
coming out from their being delivered from their oppressor to a new location but but never changing their mindset and so here we see the church we, the church i believe most of it lives in this wilderness experience um, we celebrate the new birth. We sing songs. We have wonderful services. Um, and, and we do all of our church thing. And yet, if you stand back and look at the picture, in our church thing, all, all, we, all what we're requiring God to do, all our prayers are and our demands are, is that God meets my need. Meet my needs, God. Yep, he, he, that's what we were when we were in slavery. It was always you know, somebody else meeting our need. We weren't managers, we were being managed. Or in church, advance and promote me. The priority of life is God, you know, how can you get me a better job? How can you advance my business? How can you give me more money? How can you get me out of debt? Um, how can I live a life um, through this pandemic and, uh, and I come out of it better than everybody. Advance and promote me. Or, in the church, we spend our time, um, God, you're here for me. It's amazing what you'll do for me. I know, God, you love me so much. I mean, you'll move mountains just to sort me out. You'll move mountains to fight my battles for me. No, he, he, he won't. And that's not what he does. In fact, Jesus fought the battle and sat down. He's not fighting battles. We fight our own battles now. We manage our circumstance. We manage the issues of life. We're not managed by them. We manage that stuff now. But if you listen to the church, if you listen to our songs, if you watch what we do and the way we pray and the way we act, we, we're just, we, we've been delivered. We've been, we've been liberated but our thinking, we still have this being managed thinking. God, meet my needs. Advance and promote me. And you're, you're here for me because I'm, I'm not going to get it. I, I'm, I'm going to make a lot of mistakes. I mean, you know, I, I, because of this, because of that. And I start blaming everybody why I'm not advancing and why I'm not managing correctly. Like Adam did as soon as he, he mismanaged. He blamed everybody else. We've got to stop that. We gotta get out of this wilderness. We gotta move into freedom. And that means being responsible, being responsible for my appetite, being responsible for my priority, be responsible for my motive. Humble myself, it's all about God, it's not about me. Prioritize the kingdom, it's advancement. What I can do in the world, not what I can get from the world, what I can achieve by my life in the world and not what can the world do for me while I'm here to sustain me. That's not what it's all about.